In this video, we're going to take a look at a legal problem called number of longest increasing subsequence. So this question is very similar to the legal 300 longest increasing subsequence. So I highly recommend to check out that video that I did longest increasing subsequence before this video. So in the longest increasing subsequence video, I talk about how we can be able to solve this problem using dynamic programming, top down approach, bottom up approach, as well as how we can be able to use uh, binary search to improve the time complexity down to unlock in. But in this question, in this video, I'm going to focus on a question that's related to that's similar to longest increasing subsequence, which is called number of longest increasing subsequence. So the question is, we're given an integer array nums return the number of longest increasing subsequences. So notice that the subsequence has to be strictly increasing. So first, let's answer what is a subsequence. So a subsequence is basically a sub array of the original array where each and every single element that we have in the subarray is the same order as we have in the original array. So let's say this is our list, right? This is our array. And uh, in this case, a subsequence will be five, four, or in this case, there could be many situations, right? We could have one, five, seven could be a subsequence, right? Or three, five, four, that could also be a subsequence, right? We can also have one, seven or one, four, right? So those are all valid subsequence, but let's say we have a situation where we have three and one, that's not a subsequence, right? Because you can see the order is not the same. So in this case, what we want to do is we want to find the increasing subsequence. If I want to find the increasing subsequence, basically means that um, elements, right? Let's say we have a array like this, right? In this case, you can see there are two longest, in, in this case, two increase, well, there are many increasing subsequence, right? Three and five, that's increasing because the, ele the next element which is five, which is bigger than three, right? Or I can just have one element itself that also can be an increasing subsequence. If I have four, uh, seven, that's also a increasing subsequence, right? However, though, if I have, let's say for this example, if I have two and two, in this case, you can see this is not increasing, right? They're not increasing. So therefore this is not a increasing subsequence. So in this case, you can see here, we want to find the longest increasing subsequence. Basically, what we're trying to do is we're trying to find the longest increasing subsequence, right? In this case, you can see here for this array, there are many increasing subsequence, right? I can have three, five, I can have three, four, I can have three, seven, one, seven. There's so many, but the longest increasing subsequence is four, right? So the maximum or the longest increasing subsequence in this array is basically four, right? I can, the max, the longest in this case is one, three, four, seven, or long, or the other one is one, three, five, seven, right? So in this case, th this, these two subsequence will give us a size of four. So therefore, um, there are two longest increasing subsequence in total, right? And that's what we're trying to return at the end. And you can see here, we also have another example, right? Here's our example two. And if it's not increasing at all, then in this case, the longest increasing subsequence in this array which is just one, right? So total in total, how many longest increasing subsequence do we have? We know that the longest increasing subsequence for this array, the longest is one, and there are five of, five of those subsequences that has a longest increasing subsequence of one. So therefore, in total, there are five of them, right? So length of longest increasing subsequence is one, and there are five subsequence length is one, so the output is five. So you can see here, this is the output. And let's take a look at the constraints here. So the constraints you can see here, uh, we could have negative values and the array is not sorted. And you can see here, the length of the array is between one to 2000. So in this case, how can we resolve this problem? So originally, when we're trying to find the longest increase in subsequence, right? In this case, you can see here, we can basically using DP or dynamic programming, right? Um, basically, here's our recurrent tree. We're starting from the first element. And then in this case, you can see we're basically iterating through the remaining elements that we have, right? So in this case, you can see we're going down the five, right? Element five branch. In this case, you can see we starting at the bottom, right? And then you can see here five, this four right here is actually uh, smaller than five. So in this case, there was no way that we can be able to connect this, right? So in this case, we cannot have uh, four added on to our uh, subsequence, right? Because they're not increasing. So in this case, we if we choose this path, we know that seven, seven is one, 
right? In this case, seven has a has a increasing subsequence of one. And then in this case, we get to five. In this case, we know that seven is one. So therefore the longest increasing subsequence at this position is two. So then we will choose this path right here, right? Or let's say we go to four. Um, so we know that four in this case, we have a longest increasing subsequence. Seven is already one. So we will basically save this in a cache, right? So that we don't have to compute that before uh, again. And then we know that four is uh, two because you can see here we four is smaller than seven. So therefore the longest increasing subsequence at this position at this point is two, right? And then seven is basically one. We already cached that. And then you can see once we uh, backtrack, we're going down this path, we have three, five is already being cached, is already computed before is two, four is also being computed, which is also two, seven is one. So in this case, the longest is basically neither of those paths, right? So you can see here, this is two and this is also two, right? So therefore, we're basically have this, at this position, the longest increasing subsequence, which is three, right? So we have three, five, seven, or three, four, seven. And then once we are back to here, the root, we know that the, the maximum out of those paths is three. So here is gonna be four, right? So basically you can see here, we're basically, this is our recursion tree and we can use caching to solve this problem. Um, doesn't matter how you're gonna do it, you're gonna do a bottom-up approach or a top-down approach, but this is how we solve the problem, right? To find the longest increasing subsequence. But in this case, how can we be able to find the total number of increasing or longest increasing subsequence? So in this case, to find out the total number of longest increasing subsequence that we have in the input array, right? Of course, we have to go through to find the longest increasing subsequence, right? What's the longest increasing subsequence that we have in the array? And then what we have to do is that we have to figure out how many subsequence are in nums that has a size of LIS, right? Once we figure out, we, once we figure that out, we basically have our answer, right? We can just return our answer. And basically you can see here, this is our cache longest increasing subsequence array. And then for each and every single element, we basically trying to find the longest increasing subsequence for each and every single position, just like the Leco 300. But in this case, we're just going to have another uh, cache array that stores the frequency, right? For each and every single uh, positions and its remaining elements frequency, right? So for each and every single position, we want to know how many subsequences, right? has the same size of our current longest increasing subsequence. So let me walk you through an example. For example, this one right here, right? So we're starting from the back to the front. So initially the longest increasing subsequence for seven, right? The last element is just gonna be one. And then for this position, right? In this case, the longest increasing subsequence that we have seen so far is just one, right? And then for a cache frequency, right? The, in this case, how many subsequences has the same size of our current longest increasing subsequence. In this case, it's basically just one, right? Uh, because you can see here, there's nothing on the on the right, right? So in this case, the frequency is basically our current subsequence, which we only have one element, right? So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna continue. So in this case, we have four, okay? So in this case, in our four, uh, we basically iterate the remaining elements, Right, we're trying to figure out the longest increasing subsequence at the current position, which is going to be two, right? Because you can see here four and seven, right? And then in this case, the longest increasing subsequence that we have seen so far is two. So then once we get to here, you can see here, um, in this case, it's basically just going to be one as well, right? Because in this case, so far, we only have one subsequence, right? We only have one subsequence, um, and which has the size of longest increasing subsequence, right? So then we move. One to the left, we have five. So in this case, the longest increasing subsequence at this current position, right? In this case, it's basically just gonna be five and seven, which is two, right? Four is not bigger than five, so therefore we, we, we have two here. The longest increasing subsequence at this position is five and seven, right? So at this position, in this case, you can see we still have one subsequence, right? Which is five and seven. So in this case, we put one here, right? So once we get to here, you can see start the time start to change. You can see here, um, or sorry, things start to change. You can see here th for three, right? We can go down to the five path, which we have three, five, seven, or we can do, go down to the four path, which we have three, four, seven, right? So how do we figure that out? In this case, you can see here, um, the longest increasing subsequence at this position, right? In this case, you can see 
is uh, basically going to be three, right? You can see we have three, five, seven, or three, four, seven. So therefore, the LIS here is, or the maximum LIS, right? That where the longest increasing subsequence is three. So here, you can see here, we have five, right? So five, in this case, you can go down this path, which we have five and seven, right? So that's one path, right? And we know that at this path, the uh, the total number of subsequences, right, is basically just one. And I can also go down to the four path, which I have four, seven. In this case, the longest increasing, or the, the total number of subsequences is also one. So one plus one, which is basically two. So there are two subsequences that has the same longest increasing subsequences as the current position, right? So in this case, they all have a size of two for their subsequence, right? And they're the longest increasing subsequence that we have seen so far. So, and then we move our pointer one to the left again. And then you can see here at this position, um, the longest increasing subsequence is gonna be four, right? Because you can see here, we can go down to three path and then five and four, uh, sorry, one, three, five, seven, or one, three, four, seven, right? And then in this case, the longest increasing subsequence that we have seen so far is four. And then cache frequency at this position right here, you can see it's basically just gonna be one, right? And then you can see, sorry, not one. I mean, like you can you can iterate through, which is uh, five, you can go down to the five, a uh, three path, right? In this case, three has a long, has, has two subsequences, right? Has two subsequences um, that you can go down to either three, five, seven, or three, four, seven, right? And that's all that's so far in this case, it is the longest, right? That we have seen that's the, at this position is the longest increasing subsequence, right? Which has a size of three plus the one, which is going to be four. So therefore it, this, and this element is basically the longest, right? Or, or in this case, at that position is the longest increasing subsequence. And there are two subsequences, which is either three, four, seven, or three, five, seven. So therefore it's going to be two. So in this case, after this is done, um, we know that the longest increasing subsequence is four. So what we do, what we have to do now is we basically have to iterate through the array, right? The array, and then try to find elements that has the that has a longest increasing subsequence of four. In this case, there's only one element that has the longest increasing subsequence of four, and that element has a frequency of two. And then let's say, let's just say that there is another one, right? Let's just say that there is another one and then this is also four. And then the frequency is also two here, right? So at this position, you can see we can go down to one, three, five, seven or one, three, four, seven, right? So in this case, the frequency is also two because you can see we can go down two path and then the longest increasing subsequence here is one, two, three, four, right? So it's basically four. So in this case, you, you can see here, the, res the output is not going to be two anymore. It's gonna be four because you can see we basically iterating through the array, try to find uh, elements that has a longest increasing subsequence of four, which in this case, there are two of them. And their index in the frequency cache has a two, right? So you can see we have two uh, subsequences, right? Either one, right? One, three, five, seven, one, three, four, seven, or here, one, three, five, seven, or one, three, four, seven. So there are four of them. So the output is basically the sum of those two, right? So in this case, you can see the output is four. So now let's take a look at the code. Uh, so the code, you can see what, what I did here is I basically um, first check the base case. If n is equal to one, we just return one. Uh, and then what we do is we're basically have two cache array with size of n. And then the, the last element, we're gonna set it to one. The longest increasing subsequence, we're gonna set it initially to one. And then we iterate through the array. So we're starting from the second last element. So working our way to the first element. And then in this case, for each and every iteration, we basically iterate the remaining elements. And then we're basically check to see if the remaining elements, the current remaining elements is, is bigger than the current element, right? Then we're basically just going to um, do our conditionings, right? So in this case, you can see here, cache at longest increasing subsequence at the current position, if it's smaller than this element, then we're just going to uh, sign this element to the here, right? The, this is the longest increasing subsequence. And then at the end, we basically just increase by one because we're including the current element, right? And then here you can see here, we're basically also have to assign the cache, well, sorry, the frequency 
for this element to here because we know that this element right here is the max, right? Is is kind of like the, the the biggest that we have seen so far, right? And then let's say if there are a situation where cash uh, longest increasing subsequence at i is equal to cash at longest increasing subsequence at j, then we just basically uh, you know in, increase the current frequency, right? Uh, by the current element because we've seen another uh, another element that has the same uh, longest increasing subsequence uh, that we can go down to and we're going to get its frequency, right? And we increase that for the current element and then we continue through and at the end, we like I said again, we just increase the longest increasing subsequence for the current element, right? Uh, because we have to include the current element and then we also have to make sure we update the current frequency or a cache frequency element, right? Let's say if there's two bunch of twos, right? Um, and then in this case, we can't just set the current element to zero. Instead, we have to make sure if the current cache at, or, or the cache frequency at current position, if it's equal to zero, then we wanna make sure we set it to one. If it's not, then we're just gonna continue, right? And then we also have our longest increase or max LIS. In this case, we basically wanna make sure we update the max LIS every iteration, right? And then you can see we also have our total. Uh, total is equal to zero, and we basically iterate through, try to find a long uh, a position that has the longest increasing subsequence that's equal to the max longest increasing subsequence. Then we're going to get their frequency, right? How many subsequences uh, does this position has? In this case, if it's two, we're gonna increase the total by two, right? And at the end, we're just returning total. So you can see that this is basically how we solve the problem.